You're listening to the In This League Fantasy Podcast Network at InThisLeague.com. Download, lock in, and puck up. Hockey is here. And we've got the number one podcast for fantasy hockey. It's the Roto Hockey Show with your hosts, Tony Healy and Brian Matthews. And boom goes the dynamite. Hello and welcome to the Roto Hockey Show. I'm Tony Healy here with Brian Matthews, ready to talk a little fantasy hockey. Episode 125. First episode in the new Tony Healy bunker. Nice. Nice. I'm upgraded, telling you. Upgraded. Do you have as many spiders? <laughs> no, no, no spiders. I knew, I knew you wouldn't be recording if you did. No, 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 no. That thing was huge. It was like the size of the palm of my hand. It's ridiculous. I don't Those things should not live in upstate New York. Well, someone let it out of the zoo and let it into your bunker. But you've moved, so it's fine. How Everything good down there? All good? Crazy? Hectic? I mean, it's good oh we waited till the end of fantasy hockey season. You got that. You got through all that, and then you pulled off the move, so that's vital. I did. I got my four titles out of the eight leagues. One one third place finish. All right. Thanks, Thunder. Thanks for that. But I got that out of the way. Then we got the move, and now the bunker. It's not completely set up yet. It's very well, rudimentary. It's going to take it time. Is. It looks like a like I've I've got spaghetti all over because there's wires going everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, and all my broken hockey sticks for the for my hockey stick furniture all piled up in the corner. Oh, the wife's got to love that. Oh, she's just so happy. Happy that, that those all made the move. Oh yeah. And she's Very like you're getting rid of those, right? 3 dozen broken hockey twigs come with you in the U-Haul. Yeah. That's true. And only 7 carbon fiber splinters. That's actually not bad. Those things take like a month to get out by the time they unearth themselves from your, your fingers. So, um, Oh, it's absolutely awful. Well, nice. Well, congrats on the new bunker. Good work on the, on the titles and good work. Uh, everyone else out there. We had a few tweets and, and some messages directly to us from some of our longtime listeners and some of our new listeners thanking us for all the help that we provided this year. And all we can say is thank you for listening. You're welcome. Yeah, ab- absolutely. So I feel like before we we really get into things here, um, we should probably let them know what we're going to talk about this week since fantasy hockey is pretty much over except for DFS. It is, but it isn't. That's yeah. right. It isn't. A lot of folks out there, as you know, one of the biggest fantasy hockey things for the year is always the annual playoff pool. And so that's mm-hmm. what we're going to talk about is players for your annual playoff pools. And that can be obviously DFS related, but more so those little leagues that people put together at the start of playoffs. You grab however many players it is, maybe it's five, maybe it's 10, and you pick the guys you think are going to play the longest, accumulate the most points. And when their teams are eliminated, those players are eliminated from your team, so on and so forth. So we're going to put some guys out there, some teams out there. Uh, Obviously, there are some favorites, but maybe some players on some other teams that can accumulate a bunch of points, uh, maybe just playing one round, maybe playing two rounds that are still going to be helpful. We've certainly seen that in the past few years that there have been guys uh, to contribute only in round one and round two, but have helped people win those pools um, each year. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yes, playoff pools. And then we are going to run um, one of the NHL ones. Uh, we got an email from Rob Beach, and Rob didn't know this, but I was already looking to do the Stanley Cup Bracket Challenge. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I get our our stuff set up, I am going to tweet it out and email it to all the FanDuel people and, and everything. So if you're interested in doing the Bracket Challenge yep. – let me know. We'll get you in one of the leagues, and and, uh, and that'll be a lot of fun too. Anything right, well, to keep keep people playing during the playoffs. Yeah. Well, I, that's a good segue into what I want to talk about next is talking about Rob, and he is uh, one of our listener league champions. He is in the the Roto Hockey Show Keeper League that uh, that I ran, the League One. Rob Beach was the the winner. So let's do uh, let's get the legal stuff out of the way, and then we'll come back and we'll give a, a, a quick recap of the the Roto Hockey Show listener leagues and and give some stick taps to some listeners. 
All right, folks, if you're listening to the podcast, you likely found us on iTunes, SoundCloud, or through our partners, the In This League Fantasy Podcast Network. Hopefully you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Stitcher, or whatever podcast app you use. And don't forget to submit your reviews of the podcast on iTunes and the other sites. We had a bunch of new listeners join this year. Uh, Trust me, I see the numbers. We have a lot of new listeners. But we need more reviews. So please, folks, we enjoy the feedback. Yes, definitely. We're happy to mention you on the show. Get those reviews in. Yeah, if you've listened and we've been helpful for you during the season, the least you could do, people. Come on. Five stars. It's free. I don't want four. I want five stars. I'll take five. (laughs) I don't want four. If you're going to leave a four-star review, then just stay home. (laughs) (laughs) That's fantastic. Although, I don't know. Judging by our track record, I think most of the folks are happy with the show. So, um, so yeah. Leave us the review if you like the show, and we will certainly mention you uh, here on the Roto Hockey Show. All right, Tone. Let's let's go. Who do you got? I, I mean, I, I'll go with mine. The the Roto Hockey Show Keeper League. This is the first year that we did Keeper Leagues. We have kind of the standard league set up, but uh, some great listeners who got in on the listener leagues. And Rob Beach, who finished in second place overall uh, behind Sam, uh, another longtime listener of ours. And they battled it out. And Rob Beach with a huge playoff win. It wasn't even close. 7-3 in, in the title Jeez. game. I want to tell you where I finished. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I can only imagine, Brian. All right. Roto Hockey Show Keeper League 2. Dowdy Thunderwear. That's our our good buddy, Thunder No. Nice. He ran the table. This guy was in first all year long. He finished with 253 points in first place overall. And the next closest was 236 points. So he really, really had a great season. Number two in the league was Bobby Ankle Lock. I hey, finished third. Bobby, I say? I'm going to tell you that uh, he won the standard league that I was in. So an awesome season for him then. Who he actually played Thunder in as well. Yes. Oh, they did because they, they emailed us and we're talking about that. That's right. So he beat Thunder uh, 6-4 in the standard league. Thunder, again, uh, he had rolled through the regular season – but uh, and it wasn't even remotely close. Uh, he put up 260 points in that, and Bobby had 236 at 105. But uh, the final, he got him six four, quite close to it in the end. Let's see. That matchup was decided by three goals, and what really killed uh, Thunder was his goaltending in, in the final week. That really was the difference. So three goals, obviously a a big deal on a a two-point win, but then his goaltending, zero wins the final week, a a goals against average of over four. So poor Thunder. Couldn't couldn't go with uh, two leagues. It just had to one. So they split the titles. I like it. That's good. So in my the Roto Hockey Show uh, redraft league, mine, uh, that's redraft, standard league one, excuse me, uh, I finished sixth in the regular season. All right. Okay. Uh, Brashear Madness. Brashear Madness. He was in first place with 257 points, and McDangles was in second with 253. Those two teams were buzzsaws all year. Yeah. Well, we hit the playoffs, and little old sixth place Tony, yeah. T Lokes team, edged out a 5 4 victory in the quarterfinals yep. over third place. Then uh, edged out a 5-4 victory over McDangles in the Ooh. semifinal. Hey. Rashir Madness, mind you, tied the fifth place team 5-5 but won the tiebreaker. Oh. And then in the finals, I take on number one ranked Brashir Madness. Yes. Um, it wasn't close. I won 8-2. Whoa, uh, look at you. I put a thumping on him. I beat him by 12 goals. I beat him by 14 oh, wow. assists, 20 Stay shots on goal. I like it. You have a clutch team then, saving it for the end of the year when it matters. Let me tell you how clutch my team was. My goaltending that won me the title yes. that last week, Jake Allen, okay, K- Camp Talbot, Malcolm Subban. Wow. Huge that you had the Subban ad and that Jake Allen got his job back. 
he and that Talbot was somewhat <laughs> functional. I mean, at the beginning of the year, I would have been like, oh, that's okay, I guess. I finished with a 218 goals against average and a 931 save percentage with four wins. Wow. It's the most ridiculous run ever with terrible goaltending that just got hot at the right time. Yeah. All right. So, well, then uh, stick taps to you, Bobby Thunder and Rob Beach then for the our, our four champions this year. We got one more. Nope, oh, we do. Thunder No won our Roto Hockey Show Last Chance League. He was also the commissioner That's of that right. league. I forgot that we even had that. See? Last Chance? He I forgot about it. Tied. He was Thunder, second man. place. Jeez. Second place going into the finals or going into the playoffs. He played the fourth place team in the finals. He tied in the finals 4 4, but won the tiebreaker. Oh, I don't like that. Who who did he tie? They deserve honorable mention here. Um, stay in your Lane. I'm not sure who the team is yet. I'm still Look trying to find that out. But managerial information, or I'm, I'm waiting to hear back. See it but on your phone. yeah, sometimes we'll give we, do, we know. Too. Other times we don't know, but we'll give them a shout out. But all right, well, hey, to to the five of you, congratulations. I, I know Thunder won the other one, but whoever he tied in the final deserves uh, their own stick tap there as well. F- nothing like nothing like losing on like a coin flip. So. Oh, I think it's whoever finishes higher in the regular season. That's nonsense. I think so, too. It should be. I I don't know. We should come up with some good tiebreakers. It should go an extra week. Because we're smart. (laughs) Well, because we smartly end it a week before everybody starts benching people. I think Chris Wassel just said something on Twitter the other day where anybody who's still playing fantasy hockey into the last week of the, the year is crazy. The league's needed to end. When we ended them, Easter at the latest, the fact that people are rolling out games this week is just absolutely bonkers. So that should at least be a tiebreaker or an option for the tiebreaker rather than just some rando stat that Yahoo picks or whatever uh, service that you use for your league. I agree. I think you're right. I think you're on to something, Brian. Thank you. All right, good. All right. Well, uh, congratulations, everyone. We hope you uh, enjoyed the year. But you know what? It, it had to come to an end at some some point. It went fast. It felt like we were just here talking about our rankings, having our our day or, or our podcast per day week back in uh, what was that September? Oh, the rankings. Oof. Yeah, I mean that was nuts. The amount of mock drafts that we did, the regular drafts that we did, it just was chaos. And now here we are in April and wrapping things up. But Like I said, we've got the fantasy hockey pools for the postseason ready to go, and we're here to talk about them. That's right. I cannot wait. Uh, Playoff pools are fun, and you talked about one of the ways that's most common. I've played in some pretty wacky ones where you you get to pick players on a team, or you get to pick your players each round, right? But you can only use a player once. Yeah. So, so like, you know, you take and you use Crosby in the first round, right? Well, then if he goes to the finals, you can't use him for the next three. I, uh, I love it. I love that style of pool too. That's, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, all sorts of different ways that you can play. But as you were talking about, you pick your five players and once they're eliminated, they're eliminated and that's it. And you pick them for the, the whole playoffs. Yeah, I think the best ones are where you get maybe one or two reserves or two switch outs. Like you draft five original. If you have two people that miss, you can sub people in. So again, it, it makes sense to have guys for as many rounds as possible. But you do say you lose somebody in the first round. Maybe you pick three guys and they're eliminated in the first round, but you still only get to replace two of them. I like those types of leagues as well. I have certainly been in all the, the, the rules run the gamut in these things. So, so we're just going to give you a bunch of names, I I suppose in in some teams that I think are going to perform the best, best offensive potential heading into this postseason. And as we record uh, New Jersey clinched tonight tone. So I think the Panthers just won. So that last playoff spot still not clinched by the Flyers or Panthers. So we're waiting on that. And then in the Western conference, the Avs blues and Hanging on by a thread, the stars uh, are, are fighting for that last spot in the West. So we're pretty much, we know what's going to happen. 
Yeah, well, right now Philadelphia won tonight as well. So that means Philly is two points up on – or no, Philly stays four points up on Florida, but Florida has one game in hand. Yes. So it's close. Yeah, and I mean that's a big win against the Bruins tonight. To, to I mean, they're in the playoffs right now, the Panthers, for all intents and purposes, that – this is they've been in the playoffs for a week and a half now. You know, it's like you you go down the stretch that many points back, and you just got to win out or hope that you win out. Mm-hmm. So, well, it'll be interesting to see who gets that last spot. But I don't think either of us are banking on New Jersey, Philadelphia, or Florida going very far in these playoffs. Is that um, correct? Yeah, but you know, there are looking at the, if you were to look at those three teams. Yeah, I mean, you've I, got- I, I don't know. I, what I'm trying to figure out is, could you have a situation where maybe if you had a league that allowed you to sub out a player each round, like you had mentioned, I would be okay grabbing someone like Claude Giroux, Taylor Hall, or Taylor Hall. See, out of those three teams, New Jersey is the one team that I see a little upside, a little upside, and being able. to to poss- possibly, possibly win a round. Washington right well, hey, now. No one would have said that about, <laughs> you know, that's kind of reminds me of Ottawa last year. You know, people, no one would have imagined what they were able to pull off. And Kincaid or Schneider get hot. Yeah, I mean, crazier things have happened. I trust well, those goalies tr- more than I trust Philly's goalies. Well, right now, New Jersey in the first round of the playoffs is going to be playing Washington. Yeah. And either Boston or Tampa Bay is going to get Philly. Yeah. All so right. Philly, most likely Philly. It looks like right. Philly is, is going to be the team. Yeah, so, I mean, you got to say that you got to you got to like the Devils' chances against the Caps more than uh, the other way around. I mean, Boston and Tampa are kind of the been fighting for a top dog in the Eastern Conference for for the past month and look like. Well, Boston's got a game in. Well, Boston's now two points up, All right. and they both have two games left to play. So, well, Boston is who I like coming out of the East this year, and I picked Pittsburgh to win a third straight title. You did. I like Boston coming out of the East, and I hate saying that. It yeah. hurts every fiber of my being to yeah. say I that. Pick, I picked the Caps at the beginning of the year as my team. Uh, surprisingly able to hold on, like despite what they've uh, Ovechkin hooked up to the juvenation machine, but they yeah they have some question marks and huh I don't I mean Wolfie, man. all right let's look at let's look at the Eastern Conference let's just break this down um, and, and let's just go with the playoff teams real quick guys that you would select off the playoff teams without even let's not even go through um, where teams are, who they're playing, who we think is going to advance. Let's just look at the teams of NHL playoff or players from NFL, NFL, NHL playoff teams. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you know let's start with Washington. Yes. We'll, we'll start in the Metro. Uh, the Capitals, you're looking at the big guns, right? You've got the Ovis, you've got Oshi, Backstrom, Kuznetsov, John Carlson. Um, who am I forgetting here? I, I th- am... Burkowski, um, uh, Niskanen, top serviceable. Top. Who else? Wilson, depending on your settings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, if he's going to play on that top line, I mean, yeah. If he's anybody that's playing with Ovechkin is worth taking a shot on, right? Um, but do you trust a Washington goaltender? We don't even know if it's going to be Holtby or Grubauer at this point. Well, we don't. Okay. I mean, that's that's what scares me about Washington, is goaltending is the biggest question mark on that team. Right. Um, do you think Ovechkin in a round or two rounds could put up enough points to justify having him in a pool? Yes. So do I. Uh, not only that, if you count shots on goal and hits, yeah. he becomes a must own right away. Uh, I, I think so too. And, and that's kind of what I'm getting at with a few of these teams, but I definitely think that about uh, Ovechkin. All right, let's move to the Penguins and all sorts of fantasy goodness here. 
Uh, you look up and down this lineup, and obviously, having played um, and won the cup, two seven game series at the end there against Ottawa and Nashville last spring. No, no surprise that their players just littering the the playoff performers of last year. Jake Gensel. Led the league in goals last postseason. Crosby led in assists. Malkin led in points by one over Crosby. Kessel and Gensel right there behind those guys. Um, it's I mean, crazy. Brian Rust was on that list. I mean, it, so it, there's so many guys. And you, that's not to to think that someone like Latang, now that he's healthy, couldn't get in a groove and find uh, himself getting some points. Or yeah, even some sharp. Rando. I mean, Derek Broussard, a known playoff performer, gets in on the the party. You had in Skating the past, with Phil Kessel. Yeah, well, in the yeah. past, you've had guys like Chris Kunitz put up points. So could that be like Connor Sheary this year, or could Carl Haglin come up and all of a sudden have a bunch of goals? So, so many options there. Again, when we're talking DFS for the playoffs, but when we're looking at these playoff long pools, you really got to go to kind of the the thoroughbreds of that roster, and I think. They're as good a bet as any guys on any team in the entire league. In fact, there are only I, two other teams that I would like load my team with, and that is Tampa and Nashville. And that's just because of them being favorites and the amount of offense that they can provide. Winnipeg and Boston, I, I, yeah. I think, are next on those lists. I think so too. I mean, you look at Pittsburgh, like you said, so – you take your thoroughbreds. You take the Crosby, the Malkin, yep. right? Kessel and Latang. Those are those are your thoroughbreds. Don't forget about Hornquist. Sorry. Well, uh, he's he, he's kind of like a secondary guy mm-hmm. after those. That's like he's the not quite that there. Thinking, like that level. he's there, but yep. not quite there. Listen, I, he's on power play one with the with Absolutely. the other guy, so. I'm willing to put him there above Gensel and. Oh yes, no, no, he's above Brian Gensel. Rust. Rust, Haglin, even Derek Broussard. Yeah, but he's not quite Kessel. All right. So no, fair enough. He's he's fifth on the yeah f- top five options. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But I mean, again, another big hits guy. So yep. uh, if you use hits, he's really really helpful. But if I'm going to take a shot on secondary players. Pittsburgh's where I'm going. Anybody that skates yep. with Sidney Crosby, like Gensel and Rust, yep. um, or Malkin with Carl Haglin, or Phil Kessel with with Derek Broussard, and probably Connor Sheary, I'd love those three lines. That top nine can go off any of those players at any moment. Yeah. So, in as much as we talk about Broussard, he's still I, is he even back skating yet? I mean, do we know? No, are they just holding him I, out I think, right now. I think it's over abundance of caution for the yeah, playoffs. Right. I mean, he's got eight points, three goals, five assists in his 14 games since he joined the Penguins. So right. I, I think he's just fine. All right. So, I and I, I could that. totally see some rando like uh, Zach Aston Reese all of a sudden having a good playoff oh, just because. I, it, <laughs> it you know, it's like that's what happens me. to Pittsburgh. And you're like, how do they keep finding these guys? So. All right, let's move well, to the uh, the next team in that division tone and Columbus. maybe forgotten, but uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets. This team could very well eliminate the Penguins in the first round, but it all is going to depend on Sergei Bobrovsky. Yeah. If he – if I just if he gets hot, just like any goaltender, but Borowski, we've seen it in the past. Mm-hmm. Like he could really shut these guys down, and that would be really interesting to see. But again, this is a team that there are some sneaky good players. Yeah. The problem is, are they playoff performers? Like you look at a guy like Thomas Vanek and what he's been doing with Boone Jenner and Alex Wenberg since yeah. he got there, but. Vanek tends to disappear in the playoffs. He was, I mean, I've he seen was it good. He, well, he was good when he was a rookie in Buffalo in his first up until 2010 yeah, in Buffalo, but it's because he was like a third liner and he wasn't the main guy. And, and as he got here. better and as he became a 30 goal scorer, he got keyed upon more. And I think it was in two, it was either 2011 or 2010. 2011 is my guess. They played Boston, they yeah. won the division, and he got popped by Johnny Boychuk. And 
that was that. And like the Bruins keyed on him. I think he had like maybe a goal in that series or two goals. And then that was the, I, he missed time. I don't know if he skated again in that series, but they eliminated him because he was the Buffalo's top goal scorer. And, and like you said, uh, with the Canadians, with the Wilds, I, the numbers yeah. aren't there, but he certainly has played in playoff games and that's something to be valued. I think so too. Um, and like you said, he's not the number one guy now. I mean, Artemi Panarin is right. head and shoulders that team's offense. Yeah. Um, and then you got the rookie Pierre Luc Dubois, Cam Atkinson. That number one line is fantastic. I would be okay stacking them. Yeah. What do you think um, about Seth Jones? I think he could be. Yes. Again, <laughs> yes. I mean, it's going to come down to them winning that first series. But I think if they are able to move on, that Seth Jones would. And here's the secret to some of these pools, right, Tone? It's just like any other random DFS tournament that you get in. Sometimes it helps to have one of those outliers that all the other teams don't have. It's, it's easy to pick Sidney Crosby and Malkin. It's easy to grow, go and grab uh, Philip Forsberg uh, mm-hmm. or Patrick Lane right. or Brad right. Marchand or Steven Stamkos or Nikita Kucherov, right? It's the the underlying guys that are going to win you these pools. And I think someone like yeah. Seth Jones could be a sneaky good pick. Uh, for I think so. Uh, going into the playoffs, I'm looking at defensemen. Um, Brent Burns is probably the guy. I mean, he's probably the number one guy you want to own defensively. I to, can I pause you on the Brent Burns yeah. take? Yeah, I'm I watching. Can. Uh, I'm watching the Masters today, and I wish I remembered who it was. They're putting out on 18, and they're showing him on the sideline. It might have been Tony Finau when he was finishing up, but uh, they're sitting there and they're showing like the crowd shot, and as they pan. I shit you not, I thought Brent Burns was sitting right there. And I'm like, is it an off night for San Jose? Like, I, I was like scrambling to my phone to make that determination. <laughs> that would be amazing. I really want, like, I, I, I didn't know what to think. I, I, I don't blame you. I, was, that would I, be, I wish I had a screen capture. I would post it right now. That would, that would have been great. Wait, did, they didn't play tonight, did they? Uh, San Jose is not playing tonight. No. Where are they at tomorrow? San Jose. Hold. Let's figure this out. Uh, this could be. Sa- no, they are, Jose. they are playing tonight. They're, they got a home game against Colorado tonight. Oh. There goes my theory. Damn it. Yes. Yes. No. Sorry. All right. It wasn't Brent Burns then, but it was his doppelganger was at the Masters. Joe Thornton. <laughs> <laughs> no, this guy had a shirt on. No. Oh man, did you see? Speaking now, you've got me down the rabbit hole. I really did you see the tweet tangent, that I'm sorry. San Jose sent out? You know how everything on Twitter right now they're doing. If you didn't love me at, then you no can't love me at. I, I don't know. I'm not hip to these things. Anyway, so they've been doing. So you take a picture of something that's terrible, and if you you say if you didn't love me at this, then you can't love me at like whatever, right? Okay, like. I don't know, winning the Masters. If you didn't love me when I couldn't make the PGA Tour, then you gotcha, can't love me gotcha, when I'm winning. Gotcha. Anyway, you missed the boat. So San, San Jose sends out a tweet. If you didn't love me at something, um, and, it, and it had just a picture of Brent Burns and Joe Thornton, mm-hmm. then you can't – not you can't love me at this. You can't something at this. And it was the body picture of Joe Thornton and Brent Burns naked holding the hockey sticks – from the ESPN, the issue, the body issue, it was hysterical. I was dying. That's slightly creepy. It is. I'm going to have to find it and send it to you. I No, I'll stay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Back right, to sorry, the Sorry, you were talking about defensemen. Yeah. All right. So for me, Brent Burns is the number one defenseman that you, you want to take just because of all the shots on goal he gets and his just... Well, don't go here. Are you going there with... The, no, no, no. I'm just saying... Picks? Don't do no, that. No, no, no. Out say, of Brent, oh. out of the defenseman, Brent Burns is my number one. My number two is Seth Jones. Oh, It's right. not Latang. It's not Roman Yossi. It's Seth Jones because he just does so much. Yeah. And remember when the season started, people thought, oh, Seth Jones... Is he going to get power play two time? Is he, yeah. you know, this, that, the other thing? Zach Wierenski is the guy, the guy, the guy. Well, guess who's on power play two? Yeah. Zach Wierenski. Guess who's on power play one? Seth Jones. Guess who's been a DFS stud for most people? Seth Jones. Yeah. So 
I love your Seth Jones pick, and I think you're right. I think he will fly under the radar. Um, anybody else on this team that you're excited about? Uh, not necessarily. I, I think this is a team that spreads the wealth, and there's no. It's not like Cam Atkinson last year. Panarin is Panarin, but everybody else is kind of a guy. I, I suppose you could see. I, I you know I, I I try to think of like guys who've played in the past, but. I, I don't trust Boone Jenner to all of a sudden become a, a great playoff performer. Or I don't really trust like guys like Brandon Dubinsky or uh, Mark uh, Latestu. Yeah, or we talked about Vanek, uh, yeah. Dubois, and like Milano. I, I think too young. Do you go with someone like Wenberg? Maybe. Maybe I I could see Wenberg. Josh Anderson played well in the beginning of the. Year. I would not so much love Josh Anderson, but he hasn't been healthy. Right. I mean, if healthy now, yeah. listen, as long fourth line time is tough. I guess I it, can't imagine that he stays. There. The only thing I get, I, I guess, Wenberg, just because of his the line that he's been playing on and how well they've been playing, and then the fact that he quarterbacks or centers the power play one unit. Yeah. So I, I would say Wenberg, if you're looking at a not obvious pick from Columbus. So, all right, let's go all to right. uh, the Atlantic division. And we talked about the the two top teams there have some very, very obvious players to come up with. You've got Tampa, Kucherov, and Stamkos. Been there all year. Uh, Hedman, uh, we've got Braden Point. Uh, who else am I missing? And, and Yanni Gord is another one that I, uh, Yanni Gord. terrific this year. You, they added Ryan McDonough. You've mm. got Andre Vasilevsky as, as probably one of the top goalies that you can select in here. So all sorts of fantasy goodness here. Oh, it's unreal. Tampa Bay is such a strong team. Oh, boy, I don't know, man. I I look at this team and I wonder if a sneaky young player like Mikhail Sergachev yeah. could could step into a bigger role and do something. I mean, he is on that second power play unit yeah. with Kunitz, Point, Gord, and Palat. Yeah. Speaking of Palat, he's been underrated. When he's healthy, he's he's played he's well. Been but a solid player, yeah. yeah. But do you use guys uh, that are like filling in – Spots somebody like a JT Miller. I like JT Miller a lot. Alex Kalorn, who's filled Not in so much in, in Kalorn, and you like Kalorn's a good point because two years ago, two years ago, man, two years it ago. all bleeds together. But he was a very good playoff performer a few years ago, and he has had that. We talk about playoff pedigree. And been there, done that. He is one of those guys that I, – and everyone should remember that because you've got – whether it be Pierre Maguire on the broadcast or John Butchergrass online, they can't say that Alex Kalorn played at Harvard en- enough times. It's like it, – it, I think it's required <laughs> like contractually that they mention that if they mention Alex Kalorn's name. It's the most annoying thing ever. I know he played at Harvard. We all know by now he's played at Harvard. But yes, Kalorn. Kalorn's one of those guys that he plays with Stamkos and Kucherov, and he's gotten a lot of points. I mean, you catch him on the right DFS night, and you're you're winning your your pool. So, right. oh, I, actually, I think, no, I'm sorry. It's it's Butchergrass in his college hockey mentions Kalorn at Harvard, and then it's uh, Pierre Maguire talking about that he played at Deerfield Academy. Oh, jeez. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Like, just so like Tampa Bay. You know that, like Sidney Crosby and Jonathan Taves played at Chattacook St. Mary's. Like, okay, we get it. Enough. Move on. Please, please move on. All right. So Tampa Bay is pretty self-explanatory. They're yeah, I think, really uh, I think Kalorn, JT Miller, Yanni Gord are, are really your best bets uh, other than the top guys, Kucherov, Stamkos, Point. And Hedman, and I, I like Sergachev as kind of a, an option B, even to McDonough. I, I mean, McDonough's yeah. never been a big point guy. I mean, I know that he had that run with the Rangers in 2014 that uh, have some playoff experience there. And what was the, the next year as well? The, the Rangers did, um, did well. Yeah. So, I'll talk about it. 
Right. I was trying to avoid that. <laughs> All right. Moving on from Tampa Bay, let's go to Boston. Again, you like this a lot. You like Boston. Is this your team that you're going to stack up? I, I, I don't see how you get away from stacking Boston. The Marshawn Bergeron Pasternak line yeah. is just so dynamic. Yeah. So, so dynamic. And then you, you throw out a second line with some young guys like DeBrusque, Donato, and Krejci, and you're like, whoa, what is happening? And then you have a great third checking line with, with David Backus centering uh, Heinen and Brian Gianta. I mean, that that's a defensive line, but Heinen gives you some offense on that line, and Backus is not completely inept in the offensive end either. I mean, it really frees Patrice Bergeron up to not necessarily having to take the toughest defensive assignments every single shift. Yeah. I mean, th- th- they can get mismatches with that Marshawn Pasternak line because the Bacchus line is so defensively responsible. And I remember that they're going to get themselves a certain high scoring winger back very shortly. Oh. Rick Nash coming back to the lineup, hopefully uh, soon. <laughs> It's ridiculous. So you put Rick Nash in in probably Donato's spot on the second line with Krejci, or you yeah, or you move DeBrusque down. Yeah, move Donato probably. around. There's a lot that they can do, but they, you're just adding yet another option, like you said. And I, I think Krejci is a a really good uh, subtle kind of secondary guy to grab great to use for DFS for, for the exact purposes. If you're talking about the entire playoffs back as another one that uh, just because it had been there, done that with the blues and how they use them in Boston, uh, both those guys. And then you've got Krug and McAvoy that you can use on the back end. So a ton of options. And then you've got Tuga Rask. So, I, you're, I think you're going to see a lot of people going with a, a huge Boston stack in these pools, and justifiably so. I think you're right. It's so funny. I'm thinking to myself right now, Derek, one of our longtime listeners, is probably losing his mind because we were talking nice about David Krejci. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Uh, I'm dying right now. Okay. Hey, everyone. Uh, do it. Every once in a while. All right. So now from the Boston Bruins to the Toronto Maple Leafs. <sighs> this is where I really can't say anything nice. Let's just I listen, outside of Austin Matthews, I, I don't care to talk about this. Well, I mean, a huge, huge player this year, uh, and he earned himself some bank because he's going to get paid this offseason is oh, yeah. JVR. I mean, talk mm-hmm. about. And, uh, you know, props where they're deserved. Mitch Marner playing like a man-child the past two and a half months. Uh, for someone really that good. we were, like, prepared to drop uh, over the winter, uh, has really just played, lived up to his billing coming into this year as really a, a great young building block on that team. So, so. For playoff pools, let's talk about somebody who's got tons of playoff experience on this team, Patrick Marlowe. Yes, Tony, yes. Patrick Marlowe, do you like him for pools? And then Absolutely. I'll talk about his, his in-game the only, ritual. Here's play. the only problem is that Toronto's going to go up against Boston or Tampa in the first round. Yeah, well, that's that's going to be and a big so, issue. So do they score enough against those two goalies, against those two dominant teams in the first round – I mean, let's be honest, they're likely not going to win that matchup. And Listen, even if it were to go seven games, do they get enough points during that against those two goalies? I I, I don't know if I'm touching Toronto. I understand what you're saying, and I'm worried about Frederick Anderson. I'm definitely not using him. Yeah. But if they end up drawing Tampa Bay, yeah. Vasilevsky has not been oh, great sure. down the stretch. He tired he's played a lot more hockey than he ever has so yeah listen you get a letdown from him somebody well, can yeah well fun. let's put it this way if i if i'm only I'm doing if on i'm that. only doing one entry into my playoff pool i'm not touching toronto if i'm having maybe a second a third entry sure i uh, toss Toss some guys in and if you're allowed to have subs then definitely and, and if you want to go kind of off board and you don't want to go with JVR, Austin Matthews, Marner, then you go with Kadri, Marlowe, 
Um, you look That's at someone like Morgan Riley and Jack, Jake Gardner, but yeah. yeah, steer clear of uh, Anderson even in those pools. But they, I mean, they do have value. It's just uh, luck of the draw for them is that one way or the other, you're playing one of the best teams in the NHL in the first round. So you just hey, you don't like where they're at right now. All right. Do you want to finish the East with New Jersey? Uh, yeah, we skipped over them, didn't we? Because we went the other division. Well, so, yeah, we let's, the, I mean, we, we, we briefly talked about uh, Jersey uh, at the top of this with Taylor Hall. Not, I mean, <laughs> Palmieri, Hall. Palmieri got hurt. Maroon, I, I don't think is the same guy that he was in Edmonton. You've got Vatanen and, and Will Butcher, but not huge value there. Uh, outside Pavel of Zaka and then Nico Hishier. I mean, there's really not a lot there. No. Oh, outside of Taylor Hall, I want nobody on New Jersey. Yeah. Taylor Hall has got to be as close to a Hart Trophy as he'll ever be. Yeah. L- leading his team with 93 points, and Nico Hishier, I believe, has the second most points on the team with 52. Yeah. Is all you need to know. Like you said, Vatnin, I can see him. As useful, he's definitely in the top 15 defensemen being drafted. Right. But outside of Taylor Hall, look, I'm not. No, there's I'm, no one in there. And, and I mean, you guys, you not even guys with, I, there are some people with numbers. You you look at Grabner, always up there on uh, full strength goals. Uh, for whatever reason, he just has that bizarre uh, stat line hard. every year. And But yeah, Taylor Hall is really the summer. only guy that you're, you're using off Jersey. And again, you're probably only going to use them for a round, but like you said, there crazier things have happened and maybe you throw Taylor Hall just because of how good he's been. And if you can sub him out, should they get beat by the caps, then you sub him out and enjoy whatever he got you in the first round. All right. Well, that's going to move us to the central division and the team that you want to talk about stacking the Nashville Predators, yeah. which gives you so many insane options. Like, I don't even know where to begin. Here's here's what I like about Nashville is that as much as Ryan Johansson and Turris maybe leave or fantasy owners wanting a little more out of a, a center, they're wingers. There's just so much there for you. And the fact that they were able to add uh, – I'm gonna, I should let you try to pronounce – Tavonin, how do you pronounce his name? That the, they added. Yeah. Um, I forget how to say his name. I just listened to it the other night. Now I feel like a, a yahoo for not being able to say it properly. Oh, the kid from Europe. Know. What? The, why am yes, I, I gagging on his name? Well, I don't think he's eligible for the playoffs, though. No, he isn't. Why? I don't think. Maybe he is. I, I thought he was. Yeah. All right. All right. Moving past that. I Maybe sound like is. an idiot now for mentioning. I could be. But, but um, anyway, the the amount of wingers that they have available that uh, you could use, but even more so the amount of defensemen, and and we learned that last year, watching Ryan Ellis just turn into a household name during the playoffs and, and the Preds. So run. good. And so the fact that even if you were to have a draft of players, the fact of what the Preds leave you between Yossi, Prunell, Carl. Uh, Ryan Ellis, Ekholm, it just is fantastic. But again, you just go through Forsberg, uh, Arvidsson, Fiala, Smith. Hartman is not terrible. And uh, let's be honest, uh, Peke Rene has to be toward the top of any goaltender that you're going to grab just because of the potential for them going back to the finals this year. And Yarncroc, I mean, he's on the IR, so (laughs) it's... It's like there are just so many good players on this on this team. So, yeah, I, I have no problem stacking uh, Nashville at all. I think you're 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 right there. No. Nope. All right. So for Nashville, let's talk about one of our favorite teams that we talked about going into this year. Yeah, we were the Winnipeg Jets and your favorite Kyle Connor. Yeah, I mean massive. I mean, again, I I own him all over the place and responds in a huge way this year. And who knew he was going to do that? But you, you look at just that team and the way it's put together. Could you see them making it out of the first round? Yes, absolutely. I, I look at 
their matchup with Minnesota and I feel like Minnesota leaves me wanting more. I feel like Winnipeg should win that first round. Yeah. I know they're young, but I think they have the edge talent wise, I think. Oh man, they're so deep offensively. The way that they've played this year. I I I'd call me yeah. crazy. I don't know. Minnesota, I feel like they're the same team as they, they've been. And last year I was all over Minnesota and they were just a, a massive disappointment. Not much has changed from year to year. They just lost Suter for the rest of the yep. year or at least until the well, – He has surgery tomorrow, I think. Oh, so he is done. And yeah, he's done. So when you take someone's top defender off a team like that, listen, Eric Stahl, a phenomenal year. And we can talk about uh, the Wild in a minute, but – I, I, the Jets, there's just something about them this year, and you look they at are how stacked four they lines are. deep. Yeah, four exactly. lines deep. And you look at that fourth single, line with Adam line. Lowry. Yeah, have players yeah. And that Joel on yeah. Please, I would love him in my top six in Montreal. Yeah. Adam La- Lowry and Joel Armia are fantastic hockey players, and they're on the fourth line. Yeah. You have Brian Little; he's been moved to wing. Yeah. I mean, come on. Well, but just looking at the top six, any of those guys, all of those guys should be on a lineup in in your pool. Um, Connor again, another one who uh, kind of a, a side little move that you could zig when everybody else is zagging, or is it zag when everybody else is zig? I don't know what it is. Yeah, it works either. Way. Yeah, but yeah, I, and we've talked about the Stastny Ealers Lane line, so. Eh. There's so much to like there. You can go with uh, Truba, Bufflin. I mean, just a mm-hmm. lot there. And, and then obviously you've got uh, Connor Hellebuck uh, in net. So, so good. So good. Yeah, so I like bad. Winnipeg. I like yeah. him. I like him more than I like Vegas, San Jose, Anaheim, and L.A. Unfortunately, they won't make it as far just the way that this is structured. Probably not. Because uh, I look, and I think like Matthew Perot could be a sneaky good play from this team as well. He can heat up and and score some goals. Yeah. I mean, he is on the second unit power play. They're just so deep. They are so strong. It's it's going to be a fun first series um, against Minnesota. I think to watch. I don't think Minnesota is going to put up too much of a fight, especially without Suter. Yeah, but. There could definitely be a lot of offense from Winnipeg, and Connor Hellebuck should have a heck of a series. So yeah, I, I think so. I, I'm stacking, I think I'm stacking so. there. All right, let's look at Minnesota real quick. We're just talking oh, about uh, the Wild, and again, I, a, a solid team, but just because of the division that they're in, just because of the matchup that they have, I don't think I'm really touching them. I don't think they're going to make it out of uh, the first round. And Stahl, just come talk about someone hooked up to the Juvenation machine this year. Dude, it's phenomenal unreal. year. Eric Stahl, like, I mean, if you would have told me he was going to score 40 goals this year, I would have taken that bet oh, and yeah. probably bet my house. Put a mortgage payment on that one, yeah. I agree. Serious. I agree. I, I just – it's shocking. Well, Absolutely shocking. Almost as shocking as William Carlson's 43. Not quite as shocking, but almost as shocking as William Carlos. Yeah, that's a good one. Which one is more surprising? Maybe we'll do a show on that. We'll look at <laughs> end of the year numbers there's, and what's yeah, crazier. There's some crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, but again, if you're going to use anybody on Minnesota, the Stahl, Zucker, Grunland, I don't know that Parisi, Nito Niederreiter. I, I, I do like that Minnesota has some secondary and tertiary scoring with those other guys. Like you talked about Koivu, Coil, Niederreiter. Um, but then you've got the top guys, Stahl, Grunland, Zucker. But the fact that Suter's out, you've got Dumba. Um, Spurgeon's hurt Spurgeon's too. Spurgeon's hurt as well. So again, this is just – Adding to why I'm not going to probably touch Minnesota. I mean, Dubnik, I want no part of. No, but I will say a, a sneaky defenseman that's been really good since Suter went down is Jonas Brody. Yeah, he's been really good for DFS in the playoffs. He could be useful. Okay, um, but for pool wise, I am steering clear as much as possible of Minnesota. I don't want any 
any any part of that at yeah. all. All right, let's all assume right. that uh, Colorado is the last team. Do you want to assume it's Colorado or St. Louis? Which one? Do you want to do both mm-hmm. or just pick? Uh, it really doesn't matter. Well, They're playing Nashville. I think either one is going to lose. Yeah, all right. I guess I – But let, So let's put it this God, way. I want to say St. Louis so bad, but I think it's going to be Colorado. So let's go Colorado. I mean, Colorado, an amazing like story. Better. An amazing story <laughs> from last year. Dead last in the NHL terrible last year to the playoffs this year, a testament to that team getting on track, Nathan McKinnon, Miko Rantanen, Landis Gog, getting it back together. Uh, Who thought DeShane would be the problem? <laughs> really moved him out. Not the answer. Success. I mean, but, I, but Miko Colorado, Rantanen. I mean, where they're at now, but no Varlamov. I, and Nate McKinnon okay. can't get him past there. But you do have value with the guys we've mentioned. Uh, Rantanen, awesome pick. Tyson Berry has just been phenomenal the second half of this season on defense. So do you risk grabbing one of these guys? Uh, they're a one and done. If I'm grabbing – I mean, you have that first line and Tyson Berry. Yeah. I, I – <laughs> I guess if you're in a hits blocks league, Zadorov yeah. could offer some value. Let's just as much it, as I love Sam Bedard, I think that's it. The Preds are four and zero against him this year, so I that wouldn't shock me to be what happens in the playoffs either. And I don't see it being particularly close. Props to Colorado for um, turning it around and going from um, the worst team in the league to being in the playoffs within that shortest time span you give the sabers hope not really it's because they have actually they have really. no they don't they don't give it's because they have the hamburglar on their roster yes andrew That's hammond <laughs> back, back, back all right in play uh all right quickly we'll talk about st louis just in case they made it um obviously some real goodness there I, and shocking the way that st louis started the fact that they're on the outside looking in right now but Jake uh, Allen's been a lot better. But that, uh-huh. that that's a tough division. I, I would have said you were crazy if you told me back in November, December that St. Louis would miss the playoffs. Chicago too? Right. I believed in Chicago. I mean, yeah. More than Minnesota and Winnipeg at the time. Winnipeg just turned on the afterburners and that was that. Uh, or the Colorado. Or Colorado. That's what I meant, not Minnesota. <laughs> Winnipeg and Colorado. No, I mean, um so, so yeah, uh, I mean, Braden Shen, big, Schwartz, Tarasenko, Berglund, Steen. Nah. I'm not even touching Berglund and Steen. I'm taking the big three yeah. and Joel Edmondson. No. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Petriangelo. And that's – Joel that's, and, and, Edmondson. That's a great I, from I know. The, I saw it. It's terrific. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. Sometimes <laughs> you just got to – Throw it in there. I mean, Very look, valuable. they're getting Great, they're on. getting Nashville. So, as good as Jake Allen's been, I'm still not using him either. Right, right. Not against Pekka Rene. No, no. no and the same thing. Hey, no. Maybe they get. Maybe they sneak in, but I, I don't expect much uh, when they come out of that. All right, let's go out to the Pacific Division and the surprise of the year: the Vegas Golden Knights. What are you talking about? Surprise! I had them picked all the way. I, mean, I know you did. <laughs> yeah, right. I know you did. Uh, you and everybody else. <laughs> yeah. So I look at this team, and the scoring is so spread out. Yeah. I mean, listen. I know William Carlson has forty three goals, but listen, he's not going to shoot over twenty something percent. Yeah. In the playoffs, and he's not going to do it again next year. Uh, James Neal. Right and I mean, no. you got to look at. The current year that they're in, I, I know that that can't last forever. But he's but slowed down. He's slowed down. He really, really has. I, I'm i not – I can't. I can't trust him. James Neal is probably the only forward that I trust on this. Not even roster. March Assault? Yeah, I guess. I, March Assault, I could – yeah. All right. March Assault takes plenty of shots. I would trust March Assault. All right. Uh, um, defense, not anything there. I, again, you had Shea Theodore has gotten some playoff experience with the Ducks, but nothing not really. Schnab has some with the Kings. Um, Flurry, Flurry, their goaltender. What do you think that, there? That was I was going to talk about Flurry. I, I think he's if there's somebody I'm taking off this team, it could be him. 
But then it, it begs the question, if you're taking Flurry, expecting him to get a lot of wins, wouldn't you grab some of their offense? But they're not going to be a team that wins 7-3. I actually worry they're about the first two, round one, matchup. I'm going to be 2-1, 2-2. Two, two, two. I know really? that their first round matchup is not set, that LA, San Jose, Anaheim are all so close right now. Uh, they're with a point. They're within a point of one another. That the the matchups really aren't set. But if they play LA, I that worries me a little. Ah, well, yeah. Now that they have Jeff Carter back, they've been a much different team. And just um, put that team in the playoffs, and I think it's like I don't know. They've been there. They know how to do it, and they have enough veteran experience on that team that you get it. You play someone against like Vegas that they're there. They've surpassed all expectations. Are they just happy to be in the playoffs? And do the Kings just methodically take them out in six games type deal? Oh gosh, I hope not. I really hope yeah, I not. I want to see but Vegas go just for the storyline. Oh my god, Vegas is who I'm rooting for in the West. All right, why not? I, I but like I said, all right. So if I'm going Vegas, Neil, um, March Assault. Yeah, I want to say Touche. But you got to take Carlson. I mean, I can't. I can't. I won't. Right. I won't. I won't. I, you can. Tomas Tatar? No. Love for the former Red Wing? He's burned me too many times. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Marc Andre Fleury. I, those, those are the guys that I'm really looking All at. Right, David so- Braun, Riley Smith. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, if they're not hurt and they're back, I. Okay, but all right. Let's go to their right now. Who their matchup would be is the Los Angeles Kings, as we just mentioned. I like the Kings. I I, I know that. I, I think there are some players here that shockingly could could be in for at least a trip to the Western Conference Finals. As bizarre <laughs> as that sounds, it, it they could be. I, they really could be. Um, Dustin Brown, I don't even know what to say about the, the upstate New York boy. He's, he lost weight going into the season or gained weight going into the season. And he's been fantastic. He got faster after gaining weight. Uh, Kopitar is playing with Brown and Tanner Pearson currently. And then Jeff Carter's with the Foley and Tobias Ryder. Um, Adrian Kempe, he's, they've kind of like interchanged that second and third line quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I, I love Jeff Carter. I love Kopitar. Yeah. Toffoli and Pearson have been disappointments we know this that year. They're streaky. They're very streaky. Dustin Brown scares the crap out of me, but he's been really good in the playoffs. So uh, I listen, Dustin Brown would be one of my last picks if I'm taking um, okay. him at all. What about and then, here's here's two guys, Drew Doughty, Jonathan Quick. Uh, Doughty and Quicker, yeah, I'm I'm I would happily grab you're, them both. You're you're buying that stock? Yes, absolutely. I I can't not. Drew Doughty has been so good in the playoffs, and Jonathan Quick has been so good in huge games, um, not just for the Kings, but also also for Team USA. That I I'll happily take both of them. I mean. If I get a good good pick on them, like a good value, I, I would use them. I think so. I mean, if they're playing Vegas, like you said, they've got a chance to beat Vegas just to, just as much as Vegas has a chance to beat them. I mean, they're they've been there before, they've done it. Yeah. They've gone into the playoffs as an eight seed and okay. won. Exactly. So, all right. So let's yes, uh, look at their Vegas. division mates, um, San Jose and Anaheim, right now matching up. All right. We'll go to San Jose. All right. San Jose first, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Joe Pavelski. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about Logan Couture going into the playoffs? He always underwhelms me. I don't know why, but he does. He hurt too much. He does. And speaking of injuries, Evander Kane. Bang. Yeah, that hurts. Yeah. Big, big time. But hopefully he'll be back, right? Yeah, what's his status? I'm clicking on it now. I know he mentioned something earlier, but... Um, he says he's going to be ready for the playoffs. Yep, that's what he's I mean, saying. This is the first time he's going to be playing in the postseason. Is it really? Yeah. He didn't in Buffalo, and Winnipeg was bad, so yeah. And 
Atlanta wasn't sniffing the playoffs. Yeah, he was there so. with Atlanta, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he's in. Um, I actually like Kane if he's if he's healthy, but I Me mean, too. obviously it's Brent Burns. Mm-hmm. And then about? everybody else. Yeah, I I don't see. I mean, I'm actually surprised San Jose is in the spot that they're in. Do you see them uh, beating uh, Anaheim? I mean, they're three zero and one against the the Ducks this year. I surprised. I me, so I look at these teams on paper, and I say no, but you can't do that because the games aren't played on paper, Tony. I know. I'm telling you, when you watch these teams play, there is something about San Jose, and they seem to have somebody different step up every night, yeah. whether it be Chris Tier- Tierney, Boddicker, Timo Meyer, LeBanc. Jonas Donskoy, LeBanc. It's all these guys. Like It just seems to be somebody different each night. So they, they But they've got that big-name power. Um, Star power, I guess it's, uh, but again, I'm not going to, you never know who it's going to be. And that's the problem with San Jose yeah. outside of Pavelski Burns. Um, and I think you can put Evander Kane in that category, right? You don't know who it's going to be. Well, How do you feel getting, about goaltending? He gets streaky too, as we know, oh, yeah. uh, I wouldn't touch San Jose's goaltending with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> All right. So that leaves us with Anaheim who again, They've got their big guns, and then, yeah, again, you've got some solid defensemen uh, at the at the top there, but anybody other than Getzlaff, Raquel, Kessler, Silverberg, mm-hmm. Perry that you're touching. And, I mean, to, to be Case. honest, the last two there, Kashe, yeah, I don't even know about him. I, there's really like four guys I would I would use. That's it. Okay. Call me crazy. I, I'm not opposed. And you've got a, a goalie in uh, John Gibson who's hurt right now. So you're going to go with Mr. Softy in the playoffs? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you where that gets you. It's going to get you sent home. Uh, Another yeah. reason to play San Jose instead of Anaheim. The fact that Ryan Miller is going to have to play. That's odd believable. I know. It really, really is. Well, so it is what it is. Um, uh, those are really the only guys that I, I'm going to use from there, and I don't expect them to to be hanging around very long. So no, no. All right, and I guess that's it. That's that it. Is it. it. The- I mean, that's that's all of them. So if you're putting together put together five player team right now from five player team. Yep. All right. If I'm putting together a five-player team, I am going to start with – let's have a draft. I'll pick first. You pick second. Uh, first pick overall in the playoffs. Are we using goalies in our, our draft? Yeah, we'll do a starting six. All right, go for it. All right, my first pick, I am going to take uh, – God, I, Brad Marchand. All right, I'm taking Ovechkin. All right, then I'm going to come back with Crosby. I'm going Malkin. And then I'm going to step up and take, uh, let me see here, Mark Shifley. I will then go Kucherov. Okay, and then that leaves me with uh, Brent Burns. I will go, who do I have right now? I, went I don't three know. Forwards. I, I, I went three forwards, right? Yeah. Yep. Is this everyone? Or yeah. We have to do like three forwards, two D, and a goalie. Is that where we're going? That's what I'm doing. Okay. Three forwards, so I've got, D. I've got Ovechkin, Malkin, and Kucherov. And um, I've got you've got Marshawn. Yep. Crosby. Crosby. Shifley. Shifley. And Burns. Burns. So it's up to me. I will go Pernell Carl. Okay, uh, I am looking here, and I am gonna take. Oh, geez, now you went, Carl. I'm gonna say Dustin Bufflin. Oh, all right. I'm gonna go Victor Hedman. Hedman, yep. and then that leaves us goaltending. And you take oh, one, I'm taking the other. 
Or, I don't know. I, I kind of, <laughs> I kind of want to take Mark Andre Fleury. Oh, um, look at that! And hey, listen, you could have a team that doesn't make the Stanley Cup Finals, but they have two long series and they get a bunch of W's in the first, yeah. and second, and third rounds. Uh, I don't know. Um, well, it's got to be one I'm of the big t- boys, right? It's got to be Vasilevsky, Rask. Yeah, I'm taking Tuka Rask. All right. Do you go – now, here's my problem is that the guys that are left, there are three that I would consider. It's got to be Vasilevsky. We talked about the issues with him playing so much. We, t- Matt Murray, I mean, the guy, two straight Stanley Cups, right? It's tough to yep. bet against him. And then you've got Pekka Rene and the Preds. Uh, I'm going to go Pekka Rene and the Preds. I, I think yeah. that they're going to win it. Call me crazy. And you hate – you hated Pecorine. I loathe, but I I agree with you. But for whatever reason, that's who I'm going to take. I, I uh, The argument is so easy to make for any of those three guys, and including Tuka Rask and including Marc-Andre Fleury for fantasy purposes, but I'm going to go Pecorine. So my team is Ovechkin, Kucherov, Malkin, the Russians, with, Good Lord. with Pernell Carl, Hedman, and uh, Pecorine. So I didn't do All the right. stack. I, I kind of spread the wealth. And then my team is Marshawn, Crosby, Shifley, uh, Burns, Bufflin, and Rask. Well, this is what happens when you have a two-man league. It's it's fantastic, <laughs> isn't it? God, fantasy hockey is so easy. I don't know why people have such a hard time. Really, I am clearly we're both experts. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's even better is you know one of our listeners is going to play this out for us. <laughs> That's I, I would say make sure you write this down, but I know other people are. But also write this down. Yes. So right. our, our little two-man fantasy pool. Yes. But we're going to actually create a real one so that we can do this for real. And um, we'll let some folks get in on that with us. So. Yep, and you know what's coming up, Brian? What? We have our way too early mock draft coming up, and that draft is going to be open to our patrons. Yes. So right. if you want to draft with us, go become a patron. Yeah, sign up, get in there, get in uh, early for the the Patreon uh, goodness, and yeah, you'll be in there for all sorts of fun stuff throughout the summer that uh, is available to you and not to everybody else. And so uh, we're going to be back at it in two weeks. We're, we're doing the every other week now. Um, we'll be back. The, the regular season will have ended. We can talk about kind of the fantasy hockey all-stars, the folks who led the league in all their statistical categories, some surprises, talk about that, where we're at in the playoffs. You've got to get an update from from uh, Eric Young, too. We do. we got to get him back. So Good times. Well, we'll see how his Predators do in the playoffs, and we'll talk to him. So Absolutely. All right, folks. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review us on iTunes or wherever you listen to us. And remember, you can find all of our shows and all of the other great ITL fantasy podcasts on the ITL homepage in thisleague.com. And I know I talked about it last show, but the Prospect One – podcast for fantasy baseball uh, talking about all prospects so if you're in those deep fantasy baseball leagues or even if you just want to know more about baseball prospects for your team or any other teams that podcast is fantastic their basketball is pretty much wrapped up their baseball is in full swing oh yeah oh uh, hey now hey now uh Did you see the new football show Oh, they're a new football show. I completely forgot. Good Lord. And there's a new wrestling podcast. So oh, they wrestling. Yeah. Wrestling. Just putting it out. Maybe they'll get Eric Young on there. We could help them. We could do that. We could we could put a good word in. We know we know people. Yes. So I know a couple. Uh, they just got all sorts of stuff going on over there. And, you know, listen, if you play fantasy baseball, I'm telling you, check these guys out. Yeah. They've helped me in multiple leagues. The their knowledge is on rail. Right. Like I and, said, and again, Welsh goes out and to spring and fall ball. Their, and, their baseball stuff is awesome, but their, their fantasy football stuff is awesome. Never rests. And their new show with Joe Pisapia, uh, mm-hmm. main, one of the main shows on uh, being used by fan tracks right now for fantasy football. So if that tells you anything, our, oh, our boys doing well. All right. Enough about ITL. Let's talk about supporting our podcast by becoming a patron of the show. 
please visit our page to see all the great extra benefits we give out to our generous donors. That's patreon.com forward slash Roto Hockey Show. And depending on your level of support, this could include extra content and interaction with us, bonus podcasts, and exclusive Roto Hockey Show swag. And that's also you get uh, invited into our group me page. Our group me page is fantastic. Our room is awesome. It's going to be great through playoff hockey. There's all sorts of fun banter going back and forth. Guys asking questions about next year and just talking fantasy hockey and, and hockey in general all the time. Uh, we, we hook up and we play on the draft app quite a bit um, through there. Uh, just all sorts of fun stuff. So, you know, that's another great piece that you get by being a patron of our show. Definitely. And good thing you mentioned that, uh, folks. Make sure you sign up if you're not already for the draft app. Get in there for the playoffs. If you haven't done the DFS thing, this is a very um, easy way to kind of dip your toes in the waters of DFS and not worry about just getting crushed on uh, DraftKings or FanDuel. This is a lot fun. Uh, much lower stakes, much lower um entries so it's a little easier to win um, sign up for draft use the promo code nhl roto and you'll be able to play for free uh, using that promo code and you'll have a money back guarantee of up to hundred dollars so go into your app store look for draft go to draft.com download it use the promo code nhl roto and you will be all good and as you're getting the, ready for the playoffs and you want some help with uh, the playoff pools or with DFS, whether it be draft or the aforementioned FanDuel DraftKings stuff, feel free to hit us up, uh, shoot us some emails, NHLRotoTony at gmail.com, NHLRotoBrian at gmail.com. If you don't follow us on Twitter, please do so. Tony is at T underscore LOC11. I am at NHL Roto. And then you can follow the show at Roto Hockey Show. And according to my sheet, it says, say goodbye. Say goodbye. All right. Goodbye. Good. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.